Hey everybody, and welcome back to Arc Like Addicts. So in today's episode, we are gonna show you how to connect a WP-225 water-cooled torch to a Miller Multimatic 220 machine. It's a multi-processor uh, welding machine. So it does MIG, stick, and TIG welding. If you look at the pamphlet that comes with it, the connector's manual that comes inside the box, you'll see that uh, the Multimatic 200 series, 25 millimeter DINs connection type, is not available. It says NA for a any kind of these connectors uh, that go with the uh, water cooled torches. So, so I talked to Miller and they said that, um, yeah, the engineers said when they were designing the machine that a water cooled torch wouldn't be necessary for this machine. So kind of scratching my head wondering because it seems like, you know, 70 or 80 percent of the, the uh, other welders that are out in the market have this option available because of the, the you know, DINS connector and the type of uh, separate gas line. So talking with them, they said, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't support it, so it would void the warranty if you did try to do a connector that they, you know, they do make. Um, CK, I believe, makes one. Uh, Lincoln makes one. I didn't buy the Lincoln one. Uh, we'll talk about what I did get in a second. But he said that if you were using the Multimatic 220 at a point where the torch is getting that hot, then you're overusing it. It's like, what? That doesn't make any sense. So, you know, if I'm firing this thing up at 200 amps, and you know, I'm doing some thick piece of aluminum, you're saying that if my torch is getting that hot, that I'm overworking the machine, that it's capable of doing, didn't make any sense. So then I said, let's do some research online. And this is what we found. Boom. So this right here, uh, it's Master TIG series by CK Worldwide, uh, part number SL what? <laughs> SLWHAT-25M. This bad boy right here is gonna allow us to connect to that machine and using this torch right here. So I went ahead, cracked this bad boy open, took the torch out, uh, went ahead and put one of these sleeves on here. So what we have is the WP-225 water-cooled torch. Uh, they call it the you know, WP-200 series uh, torches. So I went ahead and put this sleeve on, um, but if we look, it's nothing different than, uh, it's not that much different from any other water-cooled torch. You have the three lines here. So we have, the power line, we have, well, take that back. This is water and power. This is also water. This is gonna be the cold return. And this is going to be for gas. So these lines right here, I mean, at first I was a little confused. I'm like, why, why would the color coding be like that? You would think hot water, cold water, you know, power gas, but no, if you feel it, like there's nothing in it, there's nothing in it, but then you feel the red, you can definitely feel um, conductive material inside of that. So this is gonna be our primary power along with the hot water that's coming out of the torch. So the, the three connect uh, inside of this bad boy here, and we are gonna go ahead and connect it all uh, to, this, to this new adapter here. Now Miller says it would void the warranty if you use this. So obviously take caution. Don't do as I uh, say, just, uh, you know, <laughs> do it at your own risk. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the main cable here. It's a DINS 25 uh, for the torch. Um, set that aside. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave this on here. This is for your grounding clamp. And this bad boy, which we'll do a review on eventually, is the Miller wireless foot pedal. This thing is the shit. <laughs> it is amazing. So we have the water cooler down here. It's the Coolmate 3. As we can see, we have hot water in, cold water out. It's hard to see there, but uh, basically we're going in, we're going out. All right, so let's go ahead and put this thing together. I'll go ahead and open it here. We have this main connector that we're going to take apart. So the first thing we'll do is we'll unscrew the top of this. And as you can see, just like the Miller, uh, this is a 25 millimeter uh, dense connector. So we'll just push this guy, pop this off. Now this will just pop out of here like that. And then these are the three lines um, that were taken from the torch. So we're gonna, for this part, we're gonna take the biggest connector here, and this is gonna screw in at the bottom here. 
uh, just like this. It's going to be a reverse thread. So you'll screw in, instead of lefty loosey righty tighty, it would be the opposite. So we'll screw that guy in there. So it's snug. Let's get some tools for this. So we'll go ahead and tighten this up. Go ahead and carefully put this back in. Okay. Slide this back in here. Okay. So it's easy as that. So we have the main power cable connected. Got hot water out. So this is going to be hot water in. Hot water out, gas. So we're basically taking a standard DINs that has uh, basically an air-cooled, gas-cooled torch, um, and we're splitting it, and we're making it a water-cooled torch and separating the gas line, which will be the black line here. So we're gonna take the black line from the torch line, and this is gonna be a standard thread. We'll just thread that guy in there. Super, super tight. It's got a little flared fitting in there, so it doesn't take much. Okay, and now let's walk over to the water cooler. Uh, so I forgot to mention uh, that last piece before I say it was complete. Don't forget to screw this cap back on before you put it into the machine. Right. So let's take our newly assembled connector here and walk over to the welder. So first thing we're going to do is take this guy, locate the key, line it up. You're in, you're going to rotate to the right clockwise, just like you would with the OEM or the stock torch. It's not threaded or anything, so just when you turn it, once it gets to this point right here, like it's tight. You'll feel it kind of stop, don't force it. Once we have that connected to the welder, we're going to go ahead and take this line, which is the water line that's going through this DINS connector, and we're going to screw it into the red port here, which is hot. So this is also reverse thread, so rotate left. Tighten it down. Okay. So now that we got that done, we're going to go ahead and take our blue line and connect it to the blue port. Same thing, reverse thread. All right, so now that we have these two lines connected, just a quick uh, quick overview here. We have the main DINS connector, the new guy, uh, that's gonna connect here. And this connector is gonna separate uh, the gas from power and then um, also provide that water port. So from here, we have power, power line, power cable going all the way to the torch. We have gas going all the way to the torch. And then once, once you have the water cooler on, this is going to be water going down to the torch, which is cool. And then coming back up over the red line and also power will go through here. It'll go through the DINS connector, come back over, uh, and the hot water will go into the cooler. So it's just a, uh, basically this flows out, this flows in and keeps rotating. So I've used distilled water uh, in here, but you can use distilled water or deionized water. Uh, per the manual. Miller also sells a coolant you could buy from them, but I decided to do distilled water because it was handy. So I'll go ahead and clean all this up, get everything kind of zip tied up and out of the way, and we'll test it out. All right, now we have everything tidied up. I love me some zip ties. Um, you don't want to do it too tight and kink the hoses. Uh, I just have it on here just enough to keep it nice and tidy. So as I'm moving around like this, it's not really pulling on anything. Um, just be careful with this DINS connector. Don't tug on it. It could damage the uh, brass inside of it and maybe possibly break off a connector. But this is what we have. I think the last thing we're going to do is just take this little bundle right here and just kind of release a little bit of that tension and uh, do another zip tie on this handle. This will keep it from getting pulled or snagged or if you tripped on this, it would pull on the zip tie instead of pulling directly on the connector. All right, so we got everything tidied up. Got some more zip ties on there. <laughs> I 
but hey, it may stick out, but what basically I'm trying to do here is just keep this from being super tight and any weight kind of pulling on that connector because over time it will sag. Uh, got tons of zip ties, hooking it up. But yeah, this is the first time using this water cooler. About to plug this bad boy in, 110. Decided to go with the 110 just because it was more versatile as far as power goes. But they also offer a 220. So that's the Miller plug for 220. Here's a 110 outlet, 120 volts. All right, so let's fire on the welder. Oh yeah, disclosure, you should never ever use a water-cooled torch without the water running. Uh, first time firing this up, we're gonna check for leaks. Uh-oh, what is that? <laughs> oh boy, not gonna lie, kinda scared me for a second. Literally first time turning this on. Uh, so what we're looking for is we want this thing to turn. If it's not turning, that means there's air in there. So, let's go ahead and turn this off. All right, so I just spent the last couple minutes just bleeding the system here. Uh, as you can see, we have movement on this little impeller wheel thing. So if that's not moving, then water's not circulating. Um, so basically just uh, bleed the system. There's not really good instructions out there for it. Watched a couple other videos and one person had this off, letting water bleed out, but that was kind of messy, so I ended up disconnecting this and shooting it into uh, just a little Lowe's bucket right there, just for a little bit, just uh, and then had it at the highest point, just kind of held it up here uh, into the bucket. Anyways, uh, got that back together, got that line reconnected, um, topped this thing off, holds three gallons, and um, looks like she's steady. So before bleeding it, that wheel would stop, and uh, now it's uh, constant steady. Um, I know it's flowing through the lines here because if I pinch this, that wheel will stop and it'll continue to go uh, once I release it. So it looks like we are all set and ready to test this thing. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is test the gas flow coming out of the torch. Um, and the reason why I'm gonna do that is because what we've done is we've converted this DINS connector. Um, let's pull up the old one and I'll show you. So on the old DINS connector, it's 25 mil DINS connector here. Um, this is not only power, but the gas is being fed through the center of this line all the way to, pull it up, all the way to the torch head. So. So that's why they call air-cooled torch, gas-cooled torch, um, and that's it. It's just a one-way direction. So now that we've taken uh, a design and split it, we now have a dense connector that we're splitting gas and water and power. So um, we've now taken that single connector, stock 25, you know, little dense, dense connector, and we've broken it up. So now we have a separate gas line, right, that's going to the black, line here going to the torch head over here then we also have the thick red one right here you can squeeze it and feel the conductor inside of it that's going to the torch that's power there's no gas going to that it's just power and the water and that's going over here but the water flow is actually going into this direction because it's basically going to take the heat from the torch go all the way down through this dense connector where we saw in the beginning of the video um, that little port that was on the side it's going to traverse go through here into the water cooler cool it down and then it'll go to the cold side back to the torch 
all the way over and then repeat the cycle we'll flip over to red so yeah uh, just want to test to make sure that gas is flowing just like the last was it was only off by about one cfh so let's go ahead and do that now okay so you're probably asking how i'm going to do that well here we go i bought this for about 10 bucks on ebay maybe it was 12 can't remember uh 10 to 15 bucks we'll just get that range uh, i'll put the link in the description below um once I'm done making this video, but this is just a simple, you know, the CO2 or argon, uh, it is in CFH, not liters per hour. So we're basically just gonna take this and we're gonna stick it on top of this torch head in the cup, create a nice seal, just put some pressure on it, step on the pedal or, you know, a gas button, whatever you have. Um, and then we're gonna test the flow out of here. All right, so if we go on back here, yeah, we have it set to right at about 14 to 15 CFH. And let's go ahead and hit the pedal and see what we're looking at on this end. All right, so since I'm doing this by myself here, I got the nice wireless pedal. Don't worry, review's coming. Um, so 15 on the regulator. I got this nice and tight on the torch head. Uh, let's see what she's doing. All right, so as we can see, we are right at about 14, 14 and a half on this which like i mentioned over there we are at 14 14 and a half so um with the miller regulator i was only ever off no more well no more than one so yeah that's a good way to test to make sure like again 10 to 15 bucks with this guy and you'll know every single time that you're at the gas thing you need to be at and that's how i make sure that the gas that i'm setting it on is actually the gas level that i wanted at the torch so that's that's the number one way for consistency is to make sure that whatever you're setting or whatever you're aiming for as far as gas flow that you're actually getting out of the torch because there are regulators um, that aren't as accurate they can be off anywhere from zero one all the way up to five to seven cfh so you definitely want to make sure that what you're seeing at the actual torch head is the gas that you want so if you're set for 15 you set at 15 the regulator right because that's what you want then 15 should be at the torch head uh, but i've had a regulator that i set 15 there and it was at 10 so that makes a huge difference depending on what you're going to weld all right, well, hey, I hope you really enjoyed the video of getting the Multimatic 220 converted over to be used with a water-cooled torch. Um, if you, I don't know what other welders are in a similar situation, but if it's a 